everybody welcome to country girl um today we're going to do some more fall crafts and what i'm going to try and do with this particular project is i am going to try to make some of these wooden beads that you see everywhere all over pinterest it's got these um they're like wooden beads on like a little tassel type thing with some twine um and you just kind of drape them around i guess it's like garland and i wanted to keep it all dollar tree so this is what i did i did pick up two packs of these and also what you're going to need is some paint now i am just going with three colors and i kind of want this to be more of a fall theme i may make another set for halloween so i'm not going to incorporate orange in it i am going to do um, this is like a beige color it's called territorial beige i just recently used that on my scarecrow sign this is marsh green and then this is um, antique parchment and all this is apple barrel and um, they are acrylic paints i did pick these up at walmart now um, if you've got chalk paints like i said i suggest you use those um, eventually i'm going to get me some um, also what this is is this is little stems that i had taken off from some flowers or that i was using that i just clipped off if you have any wood skewers that are thin you could definitely use that that's really what i was going to use but my skewers were pretty thick and they wouldn't go through the little holes on here so you do want to have something that you can thread your beads on because we are going to paint these and they do need something to dry so i just found these in my trash can pulled those out and decided you know what i'm going to use them so um what i'm going to do right now is i am going to dump all these beads out on a paper plate and i have already dumped some of them out or one pack of them and i went ahead and you know started putting some of the bigger beads on because what I'm going to do uh, like I said I'm going to do three different colors so you want to have one color per um, stick because when you start painting these if you use multiple colors on one you're going to start getting a mess so I just started putting some of the bigger beads I'm going to try and paint all the big beads first or get as many out as I possibly can and then you've got some medium sized beads here and then I think that one might be a big one and then you got some really tiny ones as you can see so i'm not really sure how i'm going to do it right now but i am trying to pull out the biggest ones first and so i'm just going to um let me go ahead and dump this on another plate and this just makes it easier for you to see and i do want to use um you know about the same amount for each color I'm going to start out and I think I'm just going to start with the um, antique parchment and I'm going to squeeze some on the plate here and I'm just going to take my brush and I'm going to start painting these and so I'm just going to kind of like brush down and kind of turn these around as I do it and I'm sure this is going to take more than one coat of paint. That's why I said if you have got um, chalk paint, I definitely suggest you use that. Especially with these bright colors. And I'm just going to flip it around and kind of like brush down on the other side just so that I'm making sure that I get everything covered. All right, so now that I got one coat on this, I'm gonna let this dry before I put the second coat on. And I did find me this little basket um, in my craft area. And so I just dumped it out. I like this because it's got these little holes on the side and I can you know, put my little stick down in here and then just slide it in on the other side. And if you've got, you know, depending on the length of your stick, if you need to, you can move it down because the way the base is actually, or the bottom is actually smaller. But I do want to separate my beads so that they don't get stuck together. So I'm just going to take my brush and just kind of pull them apart just a little bit. All right, so that is done. I'm going to let that coat dry. And then while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and start on some other ones. So these are what the um, little beads look like that I've already painted. I did add a, some white to this green because it was just too green for my taste. And what I would suggest you to do is, if you're going to use acrylic paint, I would paint um, your all your beads white first, and then the ones that you want to have a color to, I would paint over the white. Just because when I did the beige, um, it hardly covered it at all. And then I put the white with it, and it just seemed like it thickened it up some. 
especially with this green for some reason it just got thicker and when I added a little bit of the white to it so I'm gonna go back and paint a couple of these with the beige so that I can get all of my colors and then we'll be ready to string everything up so now I am ready to um, go ahead and start um, threading these and just to let you know I did go back also and I did some really small beads I just got these on a toothpick and I went ahead and did two um, of each and there's six on each one of these as you can see and so I'm going to thread these in the middle of the bigger ones so I think this is the pattern that I'm going to do and I'm going to keep this like this until the very end that way I have something to look at so that I can kind of like um, you know use it as a guide to go by but um, you know I did these are the big ones here and then the medium size ones here oh, hold on these three are the big ones this is the medium size um, but I tried to do the colors where there weren't any colors like right next to each other that were the same so I think that turned out pretty good and I'm going to go ahead and thread this on my twine and see how long I'm going to be able to get it So I'm just going to finish threading these and then I will show you how to do the tassel at the ends. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add my tassel and just to let you know I did change my string because the twine that I was using was starting to whenever I'd slide the beads down it was causing it to just really fray really bad and so you were seeing that in between my beads and I didn't like that so I decided that I was going to use a different string and this is what I had on hand. And it looks a little junky and messy right now but this is what I had so that's what I used but I am still going to use the twine for the tassel on these and I am going to show you how I tie those off so what I'm going to do right now I'm going to go ahead and make my little tassel piece and what you're going to do is you're just going to take your twine and I just use my fingers and I'm just going to kind of like wrap this around however long I want my tassel to be so about like that and I'm just going to wrap it around my fingers several times till I get the thickness that I want it to be as well. So I think that's probably pretty good. So now what I'm going to do, come down around the back side, I'm going to take my fingers out and I'm going to pinch this. And I'm going to pinch it together so that I'm keeping um, this is gonna be the top part of my tassel right here and I'm gonna take my string and I'm just gonna start wrapping it now where I want the top part of my tassel to go and so I'm just wrapping it around several times just put a little dab of glue on the back not too much and then I'm going to just secure that down and just hold it for a minute or two. Next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cut your tassel pieces. So you just put your scissors along the bottom and you just put, put it in your loop and pull it tight and then you trim it. And this is your tassel. Of course, this was the piece we started with. It's a little bit longer. I just cut it to make it the size and so there you go and you can always make these shorter if you want to so it's better to be a little bit longer than not long enough and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I put this on my beaded strand so I am going to take one end here and I'm just going to thread this through this little opening here I've got me a toothpick that I'm using I can kind of help to open that up with so that I can see you can see that little hole in there in the center and I'm just going to push this through now it's got a lot of little fibers in there so all right and just make sure you have got it through all of your loops there and then I'm going to just tie a knot in here now that I've got it through okay So there's your tassel and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, you know pull this up in here like this and then I'm going to 
thread this back through my beads or slide my beads down onto this piece so that it takes both of those um, and it's not hanging out. You could trim it if you want to, but I just think it looks neater if you do it this way. And if you have a problem getting it to go back through your bead again, um, you can always use a toothpick or the little stems that you um, put your beads on when you were painting them. So I'm just going to, and the string's not too long, so um, you don't have to do too many of these beads this way to get it to go back. All right, there we go. So as you can see that both of the um, strings are through this bead here. And I'm just going to do this for all these other little beads until that is completely covered up. And then we will switch and do the other end. And I push my beads um, all the way down so that, um, you know, they're all pretty secure. You don't want too many gaps in here. So you do want to make sure all your beads are pushed down before you start the other end. I did go ahead and make the second tassel. And so I'm just going to thread this through like I did the last one. You want to get it you know pretty close down to your strand here and then just tie your knot all right so I want this to get as tight to this piece as I possibly can get it so I'm going to pull it pretty tight here and this is before I put in my second knot if you do it before you put in the second one you should be able to get it pretty close um, to where you want it to be and then you can go back around and make your second knot all right so i got that in there pretty tight so that's pretty good now you can either clip this off like I said before or you can run it through your beads here I'm going to clip a little bit of it off and I'm going to try and run it through my beads if I have too much of a problem with that then you know I will just cut it off so this is my beaded garland with the um, little tassels this cost about less than three dollars to make I think it turned out really pretty. Today I'm going to be making a um, autumn wreath or a fall wreath. And this is going to be a little bit different um, from what I usually do. This is a bleached vine wreath. And I did pick this up at the Dollar Tree quite a while ago, but I know I have seen them um, pretty much year round. So they do sell these, um, you know, all the time. And if you can't find them in your store, they should have them on their website. I also have this um, really pretty ribbon. And this is out in the stores right now um, for the in their fall section. They are quickly putting out Christmas decor. So you may want to go and grab those up if you have not done so. Then I also have these three little pumpkins. Now these did not come from the Dollar Tree. I got them in the uh, Target dollar spot about a week ago. But you can buy the um, three on a board that are clips from the Dollar Tree um, to use those as well. And then I have this really cute little scarecrow. Um, I absolutely love these things. I have bought like four or five of these things so far. I put them on other wreaths and they just make the cutest decor. So what I'm doing today is I am making my sister a wreath for her door because she has been so good to me and does so many nice things for me. And so I don't think I have made her anything yet and I'm going to do this for her. I did not have any fall flowers that I had recently purchased. So I had this that I had at home and this was from last year. So I'm gonna kind of deconstruct this and use these flowers, but you can use any floral you want. I did want to keep the color theme together. There is a lot of yellows and oranges and um, you know, just a natural look to it, kind of like, you know, scarecrow, hay, that type thing. So I think all these colors are really look pretty together and I am going to use those, but basically this is it. So now I'm getting ready to construct my wreath. I'm gonna do my bow at the end. I'm just gonna set this stuff aside 
And so the main thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to put this together or kind of get an idea how I want to put this together. And I'm going to put my flowers on first. But I know that I want to have these three pumpkins setting in the center, kind of like this. I want to have my little scarecrow on the side here, like that. So I'm probably going to put the bow up here. So I'm just going to take some of my flowers here. All right, so I got a bundle here and I'm going to use my clippers and I'm going to cut some of this stuff off. I love these leaves. These leaves are really beautiful. It's kind of like that olive green color. Push those up to the tops of these flowers. And one thing I like, I think my favorite wreath to make are the grapevine wreaths because they are just so versatile and um, you know just so easy to do especially when you've got these flowers with stems because you can cut these off or you can tuck the stems in it depends on what you want to do for this i may end up having to cut these off um, the other wreaths that are a lot darker you would not see it um, and these are made out of the, it feels a little bit different instead of it feeling like the pl the pliable branches this one actually feels like this could break so um i think i am going to take these off so I'm just going to place them where I want them to go. like the way this looks right here and so I'm going to take all this back off and then I'm going to glue it down always you know put it how you want it to look before you start to glue sometimes the way we envision things is not always the way it turns out I think that by the time I add this bow right here I think it's really going to complete this so I'm going to go ahead and get started gluing this down so I just realized that um, I was putting this wreath together and my video was not recording. <laughs> Apologize. Um, and the part that didn't record was me actually um, gluing this stuff on. So I had laid it out how I wanted it to go. I left the leaves like they were because they were tucked in the branches securely enough to where I didn't feel like it needed hot glue. And then I just hot glued the flowers down. And then as far as the little scarecrow, I put a pipe cleaner up underneath his um, little twine bow here and just pulled it around and attached it to the back. And then after I got it where I wanted it to be, I just put a little bit of hot glue on top of that so that it would secure that. I may also end up having to put a little bit of hot glue right down here underneath him just so that he don't shift around because he does kind of want to move. But I'm going to wait until I get the rest of the stuff on and that'll probably be the last thing I do just so um, as I'm moving things around, I don't, you know, mess him up. So all this is secured on here. Now all I got to do is just add my um, little pumpkins here. And so I will be gluing them down here. I'm going to start with the one in the center first. And I'm just going to look and see where that's going to be sitting. So I need to put a little bit of glue back right here. And I can always flip this over and add glue to the back um, if I need to. I did not show me making this bow just because it is so time consuming, but I will link a video down below to another lady who has a tutorial on how to do that and is absolutely excellent. 
So basically, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to do my pipe cleaner around where I want this to be, hot glue the back a little bit, and then I'm going to fluff it up and straighten it out and I'll show you the end result.